You join me today on a bit of a meshtastic adventure. I got a ping on these two nodes over on the Wirral Peninsula which have me intrigued because they're both lighthouses. One is Liso Lighthouse and the other is Bidston over by the old observatory. I actually received these directly at home without the aid of other nodes bridging the gap from 65 and 70 kilometers away on 100 milliwatts. Absolutely insane. Since then I get regular pings from them but through other people's nodes. The initial direct pings were the result of exceptional conditions. Anyway, I know a high spot up the road near Runcorn, 27 and 30 kilometers from the lighthouses, and my plan is to go there with a simple meshtastic setup and see if I can receive the lighthouses directly and maybe make some contacts through them. So let's jump in the car and head over there. So we're here. The castle remains are on the top of Halton Hill. Construction of the original Mott and Bailey Castle began in 1701 and was replaced with the current sandstone castle in the 13th century. Building alterations continued until at least 1609 and it fell into disrepair. In the 18th century, a new courthouse was built on the site of the previous gatehouse. The castle today lies in ruins apart from the courthouse, which has been converted into a pub. The hill provides a really good view of the surrounding areas and a few prominent landmarks. Here's the setup and it's a really simple lash up. It consists of a Heltec V32 868MHz board connected to a Yagi powered by a high capacity power bank. The whole thing is lashed to a fiberglass pole cable tied to a tripod. Simple but it works. It's not good practice to have the little coax connector unsupported but hey ho, let's turn it on and see what we can see. The first thing to do is put out a test message on Long Fast, the channel where everybody monitors. While I waited for a reply, I set my coordinates to the castle and changed the name of the node to Ringway Runcorn Castle. As you can see, we have a response from Carl over on Moyle Vamoy, a 555 metre high peak that lies within the Cluidian Range in North Wales, 42 kilometres away to the west. When I checked my node list, the lighthouses weren't showing, which wasn't too encouraging. But sure enough, after a bit of a wait, they appeared. I sent them a direct message, but didn't receive a reply. For some reason, I wasn't picking up as many nodes as I thought I would via the lighthouses. And the trace route was a bit hit and miss, but Carl turned out to be a direct contact with no hops. While I waited to see if certain local node information would resolve in Meshtastic, I took a minute to watch an Airbus Beluga XL fly overhead. It took off from nearby Howarden Airport, bound for Toulouse in France.
When I checked back, the data seemed slow to resolve, but more local nodes started to appear on the list. I came to Runcorn to hit the lighthouses directly, and I did. So now it's time to go and check out the distant Liso lighthouse in person. Liso Lighthouse is a historic lighthouse in Morton on the Wirral. It was built in 1763 by the Mersey Docks and Harbour Company to guide shipping safely into the port of Liverpool and is the oldest lighthouse to be built from bricks in the United Kingdom. By 1908 it had become obsolete and was closed. When I pulled up I got more than I was expecting, firstly a VHF antenna on the very top and a HF dipole suspended from the back. I couldn't see any mesh tastic antennas but I later found out that it was in the lamp room at the top of the lighthouse. The fact that this antenna is indoors makes the initial signal trip to Stockport even more impressive. I set the same mesh-tastic lash up up and changed the coordinates and node name again, this time to Liso Lighthouse Ringway. Then I put a message out on Long Fast. Carl came back straight away, this time from Pentra Hulkin, 20 kilometers away. And then two other nodes in Irby and Greasby, both on the Wirral, popped in. Later on, Stu from Rivington Pike came on, 45 kilometres away, and despite there being a hill between us, the lighthouse node at Liso managed to bridge the gap, effectively increasing the range of my low-powered node quite drastically. Now, I couldn't end today's mesh-tastic adventure without visiting the other lighthouse, a couple of miles away at Bidston. There's been a lighthouse on Bidston Hill since 1771. The first lighthouse was built by Liverpool's dockmaster William Hutchison and it was designed to work in conjunction with Liso Lighthouse, forming a pair of leading lights enabling ships to avoid the sandbanks in the channel to Liverpool. The present lighthouse was built in 1873. From here we get a great vantage point over the city of Liverpool and two of its most famous landmarks. From 
from the other side we can see Liso Lighthouse over in the distance, 4 kilometers away. I set up a node for the final time, and by now, data was resolving much better, and more nodes were visible. I put a message out on the channel, and Jim came back from Liso Lighthouse of all places. I'd missed him by minutes. Anyway, one thing led to another, and before long we had ourselves an eyeball on Bidston Hill. Jim 20UU and Carl M1ELR drove over, and we had a wander around the outside of the site, and they gave me some info on the lighthouse nodes. Liso had a radio club based there on and off, and as I said earlier, the node is inside the lamp room along with its antenna. The setup at Bidston is temporary and for testing purposes only at the moment, but there's a plan to set the antenna at a more suitable location. Bidston bridges the gap in coverage created by the hilltop it sits on between West Wirral and Liverpool. So we'll leave this adventure here, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it encourages you to get into Meshtastic and get out there and start playing. You can see the sort of distance this system covers and it's a great way of making contacts and experimenting with radio. I was able to make a contact at every place I stopped at today, so coverage is increasing. Two weeks ago there was barely any nodes on in Manchester at all, and now I've logged over 90 stations from home alone. Also a huge thanks to Jim and Carl, it was really good to meet you and a lot of fun.